Today we're house hunting near the coast with a couple who have lived all over the world in some very splendid homes. So, step inside. Wow. He has very clear ideas. Sort of minimalist in open space is yeah. what I quite like. We're learning a lot about you on this. She's a little more laid back. Quite easily please, really. <laughs> <laughs> right. And on that note, she says, not saying too much, <laughs> follow me. Today, you find me in Norfolk on the lovely North Coast, the vast majority of which has been designated an area of outstanding natural beauty. Now, years ago, it was a hunting ground favoured by the royals staying in nearby Sandringham. But luckily, even today, the area remains relatively unspoilt by modern development. The perfect place, some might say, to escape to the country. The average price of a detached house in Norfolk is a little over £320,000, around £60,000 below the figure for England. It's always been a county that gives value for money, and in the summer of 2020, property was selling like hotcakes with no sign of letting up. June broke every single record we have as a company. Um, July then went on to break all of June's records, August broke all of July's records, and it's just showing no signs of slowing at all. The unprecedented events of 2020 saw us confined to our homes for months, re-evaluating our priorities, and it seems many decided to make that dream rural move a reality. As a result, the ever popular North Norfolk coast has become one of the hottest hotspots. Of course, the residents here have long known what makes this area so unique. Part of what makes it special is that there aren't that many people here. You've got a sense of space and a sense of freedom. I'd never live anywhere else than Norfolk, no. The scenery, the views, the calmness of it, it's just a really chilled place to live, yeah. Norfolk is a place of big open skies and an outdoors lifestyle and being out on the sea. It's a place where you stop thinking so much about work and you start thinking about enjoying life. So what makes the perfect seaside location? For me, it's got to be sun, sand, sea, ice cream and beach huts like these in Wells Next the Sea. Now, let's be fair, they are fancy sheds on stilts, but they don't come cheap. Around £70,000 and that's when they are available to buy. Happily, however, properties in North Norfolk do come up and that's exactly what today's couple are in the market for. We've never stood still. Yeah, yeah. We always think yeah. life's too short. You don't know what's around the corner. Life. You've got yeah, to, yeah. got to do it because you don't know. And you just say if you don't try, you always wonder what would have been. So I think it's best to try and fail, and then try not to have had a go. Gary, a retired director for a global ice cream manufacturer, and Amanda, a retired teacher, live on the outskirts of Toaster in Northamptonshire. At the end of 2018, I, I hit 55 years of age. And literally the day I was 55, I decided, well, that's it, I'm going to retire. And what, I, what we wanted to do was we wanted to enjoy the fruits of all those years of working. So um, this is the first step in um, starting to realise that dream. Um, and at the same time, obviously, we do plan to travel around, see different places which we've not been to um, around the world. I can't imagine there are many places this couple hasn't seen because for much of the past three decades, they've lived across the globe. Gary's had many opportunities to travel with his job, so through his work we've lived in Brazil, Belgium, South Africa and more recently Moscow. It's been exciting when we've been there, we've had to embrace new cultures, learn new languages, which we've always done, um, but to the children with us in the first few moves and they were always quite excited, going to new schools, meeting new people. Um, but as I said, the children have moved on now, Gary's retired. So we're looking at this move that we plan to do now as a continuation, really, of the moves that we used to do with Gary's work. But this will be the final move that we're going to do and the final lots of friends, hopefully, that we make. After living in many different houses on many different continents, Gary, in particular, has a very precise vision of the style of house they're after for this move. We've been very fortunate um, in some of the properties that we've lived in abroad. Um, 
When we were in Brazil, when we were in South Africa, we lived in these huge open plan houses which had all of the living space all together. When we were in Umschlange in South Africa, we used to look over the Indian Ocean. So literally we could have our breakfast and watch dolphins swimming past in the morning and then watch them coming back again the opposite direction in the evening. So it was phenomenal. And what we'd like to do um, with this movie is we'd like to find somewhere quite similar. Large open plan space, phenomenal views, hopefully get a view of the sea if it's possible. Um, but that's the kind of thing that we would be looking for. Just the kind of lifestyle of waking up every morning, seeing the ocean, seeing the sea, listening to the waves. It makes the, the world feel a slightly different place. Absolutely. Crikey, their previous homes have set the bar high. So for us, this is about really a big adventure. We've had a number of moves um, over the last 30 years, which have been fantastic, but it's always been with my job and with the company. What we're doing now is we're doing it on our own for the first time. So Gary and Amanda want to make this move to Norfolk, their final one, and I'm not really surprised. Having lived in Belgium, Brazil, South Africa and Russia, it's no wonder they're finally ready to settle down. I'm exhausted just thinking about all that globe trotting. Now is the right time for them to unpack those suitcases for good. Amanda and Gary have a very healthy budget for their move to the Norfolk coast, and they want to spend it on a house that delivers a wow upon arrival. They're particularly keen on barn conversions, and inside they're after a contemporary high-end finish. Large open-plan living areas are the order of the day, and they'd like a minimum of three bedrooms. Last but not least, they want to be as close to the coast as possible. A sea view would be perfect. We've got a superb selection of properties to show our couple, and after they viewed each one, we'll be asking them to guess the price before I reveal what it's on the market for. Our final property is the Mystery House, which will leave them divided between the green countryside and the deep blue sea. Well, Gary and Amanda, here we are in Norfolk, hopefully place of your new home. But having travelled so extensively, how did you choose this county? So we've done lots of research in terms of what's the wettest parts of Britain, what's the driest parts. And although the East Coast is a little bit cooler, quite clearly it gets a lot more sunshine, it's a lot drier. And for us, we don't mind wrapping up and staying warm, but when you live in the wet, it's obviously not quite as good. Yeah. Well, having lived all over the world, yeah. Norfolk is up there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It is, yeah. It's yeah. on the wish list. Yeah. But I know ideally you'd like to be as close to the sea as you can. Yes. Yeah. So it's not within striking distance. Ah. Good. Shall we get started? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Come on, let's, let's go. go. Thanks. We're hitting the road and heading to our first stop, the village of Sedgeford, a 10-minute drive from the beach at Heacham. Sedgeford is home to around 600 people, so there's a ready-made community for Gary and Amanda to get to know. Centred on the small village green, there's a pub, a church and a village hall. And right in the middle of the village is where we find our first property. So through the gates, nice large driveway, plenty of parking, to our first offering. Phenomenal, oh yeah, absolutely wow. amazing character. It's a windmill, it's a windmill, yeah. Yeah, original windmill. We believe it dates back to about 1895. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's God, huge as well, by the way. Yeah. I thought it was two houses we were walking on. Well, <laughs> it is the whole of the property. Yeah, phenomenal. But I'm with mm. you. It does look like you're thinking it can't all be ours. Yeah, you think that would annex it off there, but oh, wow. That's really nice. Phenomenal. Let's start the look. tour. Yeah. Amazing. It was a wow exterior they wanted, and this house delivers just that. The striking flint windmill, thought to date back to the mid 1800s, sits at the heart of this house with newer brick and timber clad extensions on either side. There's lots more to interest inside with a substantial family home that has been completely refurbished by the present owners. So come on in. We've got these really practical flags thrown throughout actually. Leading into the kitchen, I think this is always a great place to start a house tour, the heart of the home. Wow. Lovely yeah, and modern. Nice, yeah. Really nice. Nice modern. beams, open airy. Nice island, breakfast area for um, sitting in the morning. Lovely. Yeah. I like really this curved, nice. yeah. Rounded edges everywhere, nothing's too hard. It's not, I like it white, bright, very nice. I like the island. Um, 
I personally prefer a little bit more open plan, a little bit more space for walking around, but um, no, it's very, very nice. Very yep. well, yeah. There's one feature I'd like to just point out. You can see there's a huge drawer with bread written on it underneath the same size drawer with cake. <laughs> Any <laughs> kitchen that has a massive cake drawer is a winner for me. <laughs> Absolutely. The windmill sits in the middle of the property with the two newer extensions either side. In the other wing of the house, there are two very large reception spaces, one a sitting room and one a garden room. To get to them, you have to walk through the ground floor of the windmill, wow, phenomenal. which is used as a unique circular dining room. So walking through, and Gary, you're leading the way, but I could hear you when you saw that circular Absolutely ceiling, amazing. glass yeah. ceiling. So you've got that dining room, the table's been built specially for that rounded room, then it leads into that sitting room. And then we brought you in here because it is such an impressive room. And again, you've got that sense of open planness and it's very modern, it's very contemporary. Yeah. I think it feels bespoke, you know, yeah. even down to the fire. Um, it's just quite fantastic. And you wouldn't need to spend any money, you wouldn't need to do anything, it's already completely done. The stairs in this garden room lead up to another very generous sized double bedroom with an ensuite shower. There are two further bedrooms, another great sized double with an ensuite and a lovely walk in wardrobe, and a fourth bedroom which is used as the main one. So the house is of a really good size. But the main bedroom, I think, <laughs> it deserves to be large, doesn't it? Yeah, wow. Very, very nice. That's a nice big bed, yeah. The attention to detail is amazing. Everything's been handmade, it looks like. Very, very happy, very impressed so far. Hopefully, the garden will impress too. The property sits on a plot of about a third of an acre and is divided into separate areas with a formal lawn, a covered seating area and a summer house. I think the garden's quite, um, quite good in terms of maintaining. I'll be able to maintain it quite easily, but it's a little bit busy for me. I, again, prefer something a little bit bigger, a bit more open plan. In a way, it reflects your views for the house as well. You love the house, yeah. but in an ideal world, you'd like it to be more open plan. Yeah, I'm sort of minimalist in open space is yeah. what I quite like. We're learning a lot about you on this. Amanda, <laughs> does your view vary, or is it quite similar to Gary's? Um, I do like the open plan, but I'm much more easygoing and flexible. Um, about things. Uh, the one thing I would say is I do like views and this hasn't really got such a, a feel of a, as a view here but the house I think is, is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Finally I've got to ask you both how much you think this property is on the market for? Maybe £950,000. Okay. Gary? I'd say probably a little bit higher so I would say without any doubt £980,000. So both of you have guessed under your budget the good news is, this spectacular property is on the market for £900,000. Oh, very well priced, wow. to be honest. <laughs> oh, look at that smile. <laughs> oh, suddenly that open plan's not such a bother. <laughs> I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. Yeah. But a pleasant surprise. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah. Great value for money, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Under budget by £100,000, this converted windmill presents the impressive home that Gary and Amanda were after, both inside and out. It has a contemporary high-end finish with two large reception rooms and four ensuite bedrooms. Sitting in the centre of a popular village, it's just a 10-minute drive from the coast. Without any question of a doubt, this is a phenomenal house. The interior is super modern. It's very, very stylishly put together. Certainly a, a wow house. It hasn't got the views, which was something that I did want. If we could pick it up and put it somewhere else, that would, that would be great. But it, it's something for us to think about. So there you have it. How's that for a start? Very Absolutely. impressive. Yeah, yeah amazing. Fantastic, yeah. I think Good. And it sounds like I've still got a little bit more work to do. So <laughs> shall we hit the road? OK, yeah. thanks. Gary and Amanda want their new home to be as close to the beach as possible, but prime property isn't the only thing you can find on Norfolk's coastline. This 90-mile stretch, known as the Deep History Coast, is a fossil hunting paradise. To find out more, we've arranged for the couple to meet Dr. David Waterhouse, the senior curator of natural history at Cromer Museum. Why does it get its name, the Deep History Coast? 
Well, deep history is just kind of another word for prehistory, really. It describes it a lot better and simpler. It really means the deeper you go, the, the older things get. It might not be as well known as Dorset's Jurassic Coast, but it's no less significant. This is the tibia or, or shin bone from a mammoth that was found just down the coast here in the, in the 1990s. But it's not a woolly mammoth. It's something called a steppe mammoth. Um, and this, this is a replica, a little bit lighter than the real thing. And steppe mammoths were, were twice the size of woolly mammoths and, and their ancestors, uh, really. And this was the largest and oldest mammoth ever found in Britain. Wow. He can't guarantee that you'll unearth a mammoth every day in Norfolk, but David's pretty sure that our property hunters should find something as they attempt their own fossil forage. Fossilised sea sponges and sea urchins are scattered all along the shoreline here. The beauty of fossil collecting uh, along here is you don't actually need anything. You don't need a trowel or a spade. A bucket and your eyes will do. Then just remember to stick to the fossil collecting code. Don't dig into cliffs, look along the beach at low tide, record your findings and don't take too much home as these fossils are for everyone to find. And this thing here, it's got things on it here. Fossil hunting is most rewarding during the spring, autumn and winter months when the rough weather erodes the shoreline and reveals buried treasures. Oh wow, that's pretty. The colours on there. If you fancy a spot of fossil hunting... Whoa. I think we've got enough now, do you? Yep, go back to David. Yep, good on, idea then. <laughs> Make sure you check the tide times before you set off since a falling tide is the safest time to fossil hunt on the beach. Oh, that was good fun. I found this one, which oh, wow. looks to be... So that's a cup sponge there, a sea sponge. The actual sponge is around the outside and it's filled full of chalk. And that was sitting on the sea floor when the dinosaurs were on land further west. Could be anywhere from 70 to 90 million years old. OK, fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. I found this. It, it's got two different... Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. And you can see that circle there. That's actually the cross-section through the sea urchin. So you've got the sea urchin shell that's been broken in half. And if you turn it over, you've just got the top of the shell poking out through the other side, which is really nice. Now, I know that that's a species called Echinochorus scutata, which sounds awfully clever, but actually it's because 99% of the sea urchins along this coast are Echinochorus scutata. So if you can remember that name, you'll sound impressive down the pub. Um, and again, that's up to about 90 million years old. And are these valuable? Well, actually not a lot in monetary value, and we don't really put a figure on them, but for science, um, a lot, because we can work out what the environment was like millions of years ago. And actually just for getting people into science and fossils and paleontology, they're, they're, they're priceless. Well, thank you. It's been really um, an amazing morning. Thank you very much for showing us around today. It's really yeah, appreciated. Cheers, thank you. That's well, a real, real pleasure. No mammoth skeletons found today then, but perhaps Gary and Amanda will find one of those when they move here. And our focus will shift from fossils back to houses again, first thing tomorrow morning. the North Norfolk coast searching for a home with serious wow factor for Gary and Amanda from Toaster in Northamptonshire. Still to come, our mystery house throws a spanner in the works. I'm really dithering over whether to want the sea view or to have the countryside view to be honest. And I get a cooking masterclass with a North Norfolk delicacy. Oh, oh look at this. That's just mine. What are you going to have? So we've started off our house hunt here in North Norfolk with Amanda and Gary. And yesterday went rather well, although I'm not sure we've actually got a house sale in the bag quite yet. Today, we've got two more properties to show them. The first, it's slick, it's contemporary, it's got the open spaces that they're after. But I don't want you to forget our mystery house, our final offering. This will give them a slice of country living. But of course, it's going to have a twist as well. Day two of our house search, and we're off to the tiny village of Feldbrigg. 
there are a handful of homes here, a guest house and pub, and the pretty village green. Our couple will be pleased to know that it's a leisurely half-hour stroll to the coast of Cromer. In the middle of the village, on an exclusive new complex of redeveloped farm buildings, we find our next property. This impressive two-story barn conversion is one of eight homes here. Six have already sold, so if Gary and Amanda reckon this is the one, they'll need to move quickly. So, I want you to forget Brazil, Belgium, South Africa <laughs> and Russia. <laughs> this is our new property to take a look around. Wow. Mm. It's amazing. It's enormous. It is. <laughs> enormous, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Hey, well, that, that's a very impressive um, entrance hall. I mean, that's like double high glass doors, which is phenomenal. Um, I want you to really turn up your imagination because this is a wonderful property, but it doesn't have much furniture in. Open yeah. canvas centre, good, yeah. Absolutely. Shall we? I yes. love minimalists okay. anyway. <laughs> Despite this old threshing barn's heritage, it dates back to the early 1800s. I can promise Gary that it doesn't get much more minimalist and modern than this. So, step inside. Wow. Okay. Amazing. Staircase is phenomenal. Yeah. This is an amazing entrance hall. I love the contrast with the, the old wall there, but with the modern um, plastered wall there. The ceiling's amazing, isn't it, with the, the beams? You might say you put your own stamp on it, can't you? Because yeah. it's new as well. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very impressive. Blank like wow. canvas. And it is ready for you to put your own personal mark in it. You'll see more as you walk through. Excellent. Open plan kitchen. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is phenomenal. Really not a yeah. few again. <laughs> there we go. Spacious, modern, open, airy, great views. Yeah, really, that really, really nice. And a huge room again as well. Fantastic. Nice big um, island here in the middle there. Super modern. This is much more what we would be looking for, that's for sure, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Are we getting close? Yeah, mm, definitely. You are, <laughs> yes, yes. Hold that thought, we're going to continue this way. <laughs> I think this is a very hospitable house because there's so many areas that you can entertain. Yeah, it's nice, very nice room. Nice, yeah. It's small and cosy, but again, white nice walls. You've got the glass windows. Plans. Yeah. I think there's more to come that you are going to adore, but I think you should see it on your own. So why don't you go back, go up that wonderful staircase and just take a look at upstairs. And if upstairs doesn't blow their minds, nothing will. I love this staircase. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, my God. Look at this. It's absolutely amazing, though. It's massive. Love the love born. Look at this. Absolutely wow. huge. Yeah. Look at the vaulted ceiling. Super modern. Beautiful and the plan. view. Phenomenal. It's just amazing. Yeah. But you can see for miles here, way, 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 way out. When they can drag themselves away from the view, there are two bedrooms to take a look at up here. A double with an ensuite shower and the largest bedroom with a luxury ensuite bathroom. Oh, wow, that's a fair size bedroom. That's yeah, a nice big bedroom, actually. It's obviously the main room. Yeah. High ceilings and beams again. Open, airy feel to it again. Very nice. Back on the ground floor, there are two more ensuite bedrooms, bringing the total to five. Oh, that's a nice, nice size guest room. Yeah. Very, Very nice. impressive size guest room, yeah. Got the ensuite over there, I think, as well, built in. Still quite light and airy. They really liked this house, I can tell. I mean, what is not to like? It's open plan, it's spacious, it's light, it's contemporary, it's in a beautiful setting. You've got the countryside on your doorstep. One area that just slightly concerns me is the close proximity of the neighbours next door. From outside, you can see how the barn is positioned amongst the others on the development. Attached to either end to neighbouring barns, it sits on a plot of around half an acre. You can just see there, you've got some plants there which divide up the property with next door. So, like the property inside, it's a bit of a blank canvas. You could plant this up, you could leave it very simple, you could landscape it. But it's not going to take anything away from those views, is it? Yeah. No, no. Let's see how the cost of this barn influences your judgment on how much you love it. Mm. Who would like to go first? 
I would guess somewhere around £975,000. I think it would be more, especially as it's brand new. I think it would be offers in the, uh, the region of a million pounds. Amanda, you're the closest. And we are under your budget. Asking price, £995,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Something to think, think about. about. Yes, yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, do you want to have another wander around? Yeah. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Have a second viewing and enjoy it. Okay, okay thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. On the market for £995,000, this superb barn conversion features a top-notch contemporary finish. It has an enormous kitchen diner fitted out with bespoke units and a vast reception room with a double-height vaulted ceiling and uninterrupted views over the countryside. The five large double bedrooms all have en suites and outside there's a walled courtyard as well as a south-facing rear garden. This is the sort of property I think I could see us living in. This is the sort of thing that we've been looking for. I would like to explore further the fact that there's two properties attached to it, which again is a, is a big thing for me in terms of boundaries and responsibility. But, um, but no, we'll definitely have a think about this. Yeah, 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 very positive. Yeah. Have we seen enough? We have, wow. It certainly impressive. is a wild prophecy. Yeah, so yeah. impressive. I love the fact as well that it's not furnished and it didn't put you off at all. You could see past that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I quite enjoyed the minimalist look, actually. Very, yeah. very good. We don't need too much furniture in there, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you do like the minimalist look. <laughs> right, let's hit the road. Gary and Amanda have a cool million pounds with which to make their escape. But you'll be glad to know that you don't need a seven-figure budget to own a coastal property in this county. In the village of Backton, less than five minutes' walk from the beach, is this lovely two-bedroom, Great Two listed thatch cottage. On the market for £325,000, it has a pretty country kitchen, an inviting dining room and a cosy living room. If you're after somewhere to rent, this detached brick and flint bungalow is available in the village of Clyne next to the sea for £1,450 per calendar month. Finished to a high standard, it has three bedrooms, a contemporary kitchen and a courtyard garden. Looking for a sea view? You won't find one much better than this. Available as a holiday let, this converted lighthouse is perched on the cliffs at Hunt Stanton and is well worth climbing the 80 steps to the very top. Prices start from £1,150 for a two-night stay for eight people. Back on the road and we're turning our backs on the coast to get to our final property, the Mystery House, which lies in the tiny village of Beeston. Home to a community-owned pub that doubles up as the local shop, cafe and restaurant, there's also a church which our mystery house has beautiful views of. We like our mystery houses to challenge our home buyers and this property does just that. Instead of rolling waves, we're offering them rolling countryside because Amanda in particular was really captivated by the countryside views of the previous property. Let me give you a sneaky peek of the mystery house. It's handsome, isn't it? How beautiful. I have totally fallen in love with the flint and the brick. You've got those three bay windows at the back making the most of the scenery and also the sunset. This house is quite large. It's a family home, but it is a wonderful property for them to consider for their move to Norfolk. Built in the traditional Norfolk brick and flint style, this palatial property might look old, but it was in fact built just 16 years ago. I'm really excited to present this one to our couple. So it's a Im pretty impressive long driveway, isn't it? Great entrance to our mystery house. Wow. <laughs> Again, wow. <laughs> No, it's amazing. Very impressive from the outside, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a fantastic mix of the flint look, but it's also quite modern as well from the outside. Yeah. So, um, and again, the size is absolutely, you know, amazing. Why is it a mystery house, I wonder? Because it's not on the beach? Yes. <laughs> We're further away from the coast. Yeah. Good 30 minutes, but you get more of the country life here. 
Yeah. yeah. And we thought we'd explore that option with you. Yeah. Oh, Fantastic. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Shall we step inside and have a look around? Yes, Absolutely. Please. The views of the surrounding countryside are visible from almost every room in the house, including the large kitchen. Nice view. Traditional farmhouse kitchen. Yeah, yeah it feels yeah. very... Yeah. yeah. And it's very spacious. I like to say the view's very, very light area. The view's fantastic. It needs a little bit of modernising, I would say, for me, in terms of it feels a bit dark and pink's not my favourite colour. But um, apart from that, no, it's, mm. it's very, very nice. I like having the family room at the end of it, again, so you don't feel you're isolated in the kitchen, if you're good in dinner or whatever. You know, there's a social area there. No, I think it's nice. I get the impression that Amanda is keener than her husband. By now, I'm well versed on exactly what Gary wants, but less clear on what's important to Amanda. What do you like in a home? I... I... Go and be brave, yeah. tell me. I like views. I do, I always like views, and I've always thought I wanted to see. But that's quite therapeutic as well. It's not the rolling waves, but it's things that are going on as well, yeah. though. It's something to look at. So that's the big thing to me is the view, because you can change the house. But if you buy the house, obviously, you can't always change the view. Um, no, so mine is primarily the view, and I'd like a decent kitchen, a decent living room area. Yeah. Quite easily pleased, really. <laughs> <laughs> right. And on that note, she says, not saying too much, <laughs> follow me. Amanda will be pleased to know that this house delivers not one, but two decent living areas. Off the central hallway, there are two reception rooms, one used as a dining room with French doors out onto the garden and a set of glass doors that lead into this very spacious sitting room. Very big room for me. It's a little bit dark, I think, but the views are more than compensate for anything um, in terms of the light. I like that it's a square room as well, so you can have your sofas in a sociable L shape and you can talk across um, to each other. It's lovely and warm with the wood fire, the love burning fire. I know, yeah. really pumping. Look nice and cosy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I always complain I'm cold, but you're not going to be cold in this house. Do you fancy having a look upstairs on your own without me, having a bit of a wander? Yes, please, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Go on then. Okay, right. I'm going to stay in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> there are 4,000 square feet of living space in this house. It's a nice big staircase. And up here on the first floor of this light and airy central landing, there are three of the property's six bedrooms. There's a good sized single bedroom at the back of the house, and another at the front. There's a family bathroom with double sinks and the very generous main bedroom with an ensuite shower. Oh, main bedroom. Size, yeah. yeah. Oh, like a dressing area here. That lovely view again. Literally, and literally you've got, you've got countryside all the way around. It's yeah. an amazing view. Yeah. yeah. Up on the second floor, there's another double bedroom with an ensuite. That's the main house dealt with. There's also a two-storey annex with a small kitchen, a generous-sized reception, and two great-sized double bedrooms upstairs. Outside, the property has five acres of land, and since it's all at the rear, the bonus is there's no fear of anyone building on it and ruining that lovely vista. I love the views, and I love the fact that we could have a couple of acres of land here. The house is amazing as well. I'm really dithering or whether you would want the, the sea view or to have the countryside view, to be honest. It's made oh, well, me question good. some things now, yes. Bearing that in mind, we're going to have to try and put a price on this property. Based on, on all the land and the big annex as well that you've got, possibly £880,000. OK. Probably about £850,000. That is very interesting then you are going to be surprised with the asking price. £975,000. Oh, yeah. Six bedrooms. Yeah. The annex. Yeah. yeah. Lots of space, lots yeah. of land. Yeah. yeah. But That's... I think that is reflected on the price. Yeah. Just, I just uh... wondered because it wasn't so close to the coast. That, that was my thinking. But uh, no, it is justifiable, yeah. On the market for £975,000, this modern home built in a traditional brick and flint style has been designed to make the most of the views of the surrounding countryside. 
It's a sizable property. The main house has four bedrooms and two reception rooms, and it also comes with a two-bedroom annex. It's all wrapped up on a plot of five acres. So one of the key requirements that we had at the beginning was that we would um, be either close to the sea or potentially have sea views. Now obviously we've moved a little bit further inland here, which to be honest is a little bit too far for what we would be looking for. It's just a little bit too big with the annex for us to live here. We wouldn't get utilised. And to me, you know, to spend nearly a million pound on a house with part of the house that you're not going to use, it doesn't seem a feasible thing for us to do, unfortunately. So, there you have it, our final offering, the mystery house. And it has stopped raining, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, it's been quite a property adventure. Right, time to hit the road. The North Norfolk coastline is blessed with a bounty of shellfish. Crab from Cromer, brown shrimps from Kings Lynn, oysters from Brancaster and mussels from here at Wells Next to the Sea. Chef Jeremy Park serves the local seafood at his nearby restaurant and he's offered to meet me on the beach at Wells to learn more about the town's delicacy. So with a lot of seafood, and there's certain seasons, aren't there, when you can buy it. Is it the same with mussels? Yeah, mussels are generally from October through to March, um, which is kind of opposite for the crab season for us up here. So we, we have crabs through the summer, and then we move on to mussels through the winter. And obviously there's other fish as well, sea bass, mackerel and herrings. And what happens is we, we have a license to buy direct from the boat, so we may get a call, um, and it has literally been 1 o'clock in the morning. The fishermen will ring us up and say we've got some sea bass in today, we'll come down to the quay, select what we need, um, and we'll take it straight back and it'll be on the menu the next day. All this talk of food is making me hungry, and Jeremy has kindly agreed to rustle up one of my favourite mussel dishes here on the quayside. And I'm going to be Jeremy's sous chef. Just go through these and pick off the few of the beers that have been left on. Okay. okay so what I'm going to do now, is lift, lift this up and we're going to get some cooking going. So we've got some butter in there and we've got some garlic and shallots. The shallots and garlic are fried in butter until they start to soften. We're cooking on a barbecue, but you can make this dish just as easily on your hob at home. Get them going. I can smell it. How long did the shallots It's just a there? couple of minutes just to get them going. I'm going to put some seasoning in here. I don't need too much salt in there because obviously they're, they're a sea seafood thing, so there's a bit of salt still in the mussel. If you fancy giving this recipe a whirl but haven't cooked mussels before, then follow these simple tips. Well, mussels to cook are easy anyway. It's just a case of making sure they're, they're fresh, clean, and then once you cook them, they all open up, and that's it. Easy. If they're open when you buy them, and if you give them a tap on the surface and they close, then they're still fine. But if they don't close, then just discard them. Mussels are a real superfood. One serving contains around a third of our recommended daily iron intake. We're now going to put these in. Take I hope I've de-bearded them enough. Yeah, they'll be OK. We'll, we'll keep them those in. And we're going to close that lid up a second. And then the all-important wine. This goes in. White wine? White wine, yeah. Bring the wine to the boil and then add cream. That's double cream, that helps thicken up a oh, single cream wouldn't. A squeeze of lemon goes in. Bubbling nicely. And a good handful of chopped parsley there. And that's ready. We'll leave that now to simmer. And then a couple of minutes and they'll be ready to go. Oh, this is the life. I meet you on one of the most beautiful beaches in the UK. You bring me here, you're cooking me a meal. What's not to like? Does life get any better? It certainly doesn't. Unless the sun was shining. Oh, oh, look at this. Feeling hungry? Shall I keep going? Definitely. Oh, listen, that's just mine. What are you going to have? And there's uh, some bread to go with it. Oh, look at me straight away. I'm going to use my fingers. No one minds. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is so good. What a treat on a blustery day at the beach. But now to turn my attention from delicacies to decisions as we find out what happens next for our house hunters. 
What a wonderful few days. You don't often get to see properties like that, do you? But let's hear what Gary and Amanda have to say. So, sitting here with a nice cup of tea, and I'm thinking, what news have you got for me, you two? Are you going to be moving to Norfolk, or are you going to continue your search? We've seen some real wow houses, as yeah. you know. Yeah. But for me, I do feel that they weren't quite the home for us to settle in. We're not in a hurry to move. We don't need to move for work or anything. Um, so I think we could just need to sit back and maybe look a bit further and wait for to get that house that ticks all the boxes, not just most, but all of them. Because we're spending a lot of money here that we've sort of worked hard for over all the years. So I think we'll just sit back and reflect a bit more. So for me, I still quite happy with open plan, minimalism, very modern, very airy, <laughs> with the ocean at the end of the garden would be fabulous for me. And Amanda? I still wouldn't mind even open countryside views. I was very impressed with the, the mystery house that we saw today. Those views were amazing. But if it was nearer to the sea, you know, a ten minute walk then to the beach, then that would be, that would be lovely as well, yes. So do you think you're going to find a home right on the coast? Well, for me, sometimes it's a little bit about timing. And at the moment, houses are coming on the market, selling quite quickly. So it's about being, obviously, keeping a good eye on the market and hopefully being a little bit lucky. I think the houses potentially are there, but we need to, obviously, keep looking. And when we see the, the right one that we want, be very, very fast on our feet. Day, I do understand why you want to take some more time, keep doing some more research. But the fact that what we've shown you, you've loved, and the area has hit the spot... I think gives you some confidence that it is out there, but it might be a little bit of a waiting game. And what I will ask is, when you find that property that absolutely melts the heart, will you let us know? Absolutely. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Well, Gary and Amanda still have that million pounds in the bank, but what we did show them was some spectacular housing stock here in Norfolk. I have to say, some of the most impressive homes that I've ever had the pleasure of viewing. It does go to show, though, that when you set your heart on something, it's worth waiting for. And I'm pleased to say that we've helped them, in a small way, continue their search for their perfect country escape. I'll see you again next time. There was a surprise turn of events in Gary and Amanda's house search, and it seems that Norfolk wasn't the place for them after all. Shortly after we left them, they visited some friends in the Lake District. Impressed by what they saw, they had a little look at properties there, and I'm pleased to say that they found a house with the sea views they were after. Their offer has been accepted, and they hope to be in their new home very soon.
Christian. 